My name is Susan. I'm from Gibbsboro, New Jersey. Gibbsboro is a very small town in South New Jersey, and it is outside. So it's outside of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, only 25 minutes from Philadelphia. So I'm a South Jersey Philly girl, Eagles fan, and Phillies fan. We know we can't take the Jersey out of the Jersey girl or the Philly. So we, we <laughs> <are there>. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me a little bit about your surroundings growing up in your hometown. You know, what what was it about your environment that you feel contributed to who Susan is? Gibbsboro, again, being a really small town, moved there when I was in kindergarten. My mom was um, a single mom. So it was me and my sister. My sister was very young. My mother and father both had a love for music. Uh, so we had a record player in the living room. And I remember that really clearly. So we would always have music. Linda Ronstadt, Charlie Rich, Captain and Tennille. There's so like there's so many different types of influences. But I would dance in the you know in the living room. Uh, my mom also fostered an environment where I could be free, as in um, you know just being me. I was a very vibrant young girl, and she reminded me that I broke a lamp doing a cartwheel in our very small living room. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, did I? She's like, yes. But being a single mom, she also provided an environment for my sister and I, where we didn't necessarily know that we didn't have a lot of money. We were always have it, that ability to participate in Girl Scouts. And she always provided the transportation. But what also connected me with where I am is not only the music in my home, it was that uh, I started dance lessons when I was young. Started with ballet and then just a little tap and jazz. So I did jazz probably up until about fifth or sixth grade. I was swingy. Yeah, never played any sports. Um, in high school, did, was on a dance team and it was a, our coach was a, a rocket. Oh Absolutely. my gosh. Yeah, so it was a, kick line and um, met some of my best friends there, but was able to bring movement into, you know, a little performance. So that was that, you know, little ripple effect of movement. Holy hamstrings. I'm thinking just all the work you were doing dancing and just, I bet you were just on the go as a kid. It was a special time. And I would, and then even when I wasn't really, when I wasn't even participating in dance anymore i was always and on the go <laughs> as you're talking i just connected all the dots because seeing you in in this part of your life i all, automatically see these themes of of music coming through you love music you've always spoken to it i remember when i trained with you you spoke so much about the lyrics and that's one thing i observed from you is that when you were trying to help people know like where to find timing in the music, you would always say, like, look at the lyrics, listen for that one beat in the Iggy Azalea song. I am so fancy. And that's something I've carried on as a trainer as well, because I, I learned that early on that people don't automatically find the beat like you and I may as musical people. Right. We we hear it so so strongly, but some people just don't get to hear that. Has that confused you ever in your career when you talk to someone and they're like, I don't hear a beat? Yeah, always. <laughs> it was, um, especially with the different programs. I feel like Body Pump was always, man, you can hear it. People didn't. So it was always finding unique ways for them to find it, to hear it, to be able to be successful. Body flow, body balance, where sometimes it's so subtle. And yeah. that, that was... That was a challenge for some. Yeah. And um, whenever someone had a sun salutation track assigned and they had no idea about music or the timing, those were some of the, you know, the, the challenging spots too. Mm -hmm. But very rewarding and sometimes comical. Very comical. And I'm sure it would like balance too. It's a, and flow, it's a way of helping people understand, you know, you have to really dial into the nuance there. And that's part of the art, right? Oh, yeah.
there's such a strong feminine theme and and glue in your household growing up and then we look at your life now with a huge shift to three boys mm -hmm. how how has that changed from from being surrounded by so many strong women all the time and then coming to a household where you raised so much masculine energy when i found out that uh tj uh our oldest was going to be a boy i was like oh my gosh when am i gonna like what am i gonna do a boy i mean i wasn't i didn't hang out with boys you know again my sister and my mom what's so interesting is it was absolutely meant to be nothing about being the mom of three boys now that i would ever ever change you know I, even the third one with with court you know trying to make a girl you know all <laughs> strategies and um now i'm like i have no idea what i do with a girl <laughs> i have no idea how to braid i have no idea about this you know and i have a niece so very grateful for that because now she's um she's a senior and she's um, moving into college and i've been able <laughs> to you know been able to have that type of relationship with a female in the and in, in the family but the boys um the boys are so different that they're so you know they're so me yes they the way like just their eye features and their noses every time i see a picture i'm just like there's no doubt about this susan's well, child yeah, yeah um and they're all so talented in their own ways i don't know tj as well of course yeah. but you're younger too i think back to the motif of music here and your youngest son and the work that he's doing could you tell us a little bit about his music how has that come to be so court is his name and he's 20. what's interesting about court is he started young with piano lessons and really it was a partnership that his father had with a piano teacher she would take his father's writing classes and they ended up starting by bartering so he mm. you know said hey betsy how about you start giving court some piano lessons and then you know that you that the writing tutelage so he started at about four or five he didn't want to go and then what ended up happening is he started just practicing on his own and there was this passion and as soon as he learned when he had a headset on mm -hmm. and he would play his keyboard in our house no one could necessarily hear his mistakes mm -hmm. but he started to just open up and let and just let go and he was able to be at a piano performance high school a very small high school in greensboro with just like-minded people and he learned so so much about collaboration with dance and you know the acting department um, and just had this amazing opportunity uh, to be a part of North Carolina School of the Art he started wow. a YouTube channel and that music just you know really running through his his soul but what's really interesting about him is um, he used to do community theater one of the last performances was the, just one of the best performances uh, hot and racy uh, cabaret and we knew a lot of the um, actors that were in there and I found out that I was pregnant right at the beginning of the show and there's a lot of dance like there's a lot of dance and then you know you're on chairs so you have to be on your belly so we did tell the director we shared we said okay you know I'm pregnant but we don't want to let anybody in the cast know but one of the things that his father and I always you know it resonates with us is he had the jazz he had the piano the music in him but or you know even in, in utero and, yeah and at the cast party um i still have the t-shirt uh, <laughs> made a tank out of glue and glitter that like, a... cabaret baby oh my gosh <laughs> and that's how we let everyone know can't imagine the immense pride you feel knowing that how much music means to you seeing that come through in your children and especially in his work he'll be scoring the next oscar movie before we know it that's how that's what that's how we feel you know and it's, <laughs> such, it's such a great school um it's such a great environment well remind me to get your autograph before you get too famous now um that's gonna be worth something yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> How 
How did fitness become your friend in your past? It's been through dance, but specifically group fitness I'm thinking of, where does that come into the picture? So it all started in high school when I used to go to the mall, you know, so that's where, that's where, you know, you went, it was the cool thing to do. So I was a junior in high school yes. and a Nautilus, um, a Nautilus health and fitness center opened up just outside the mall. So it's like a pop-up studio. You walked out of the mall and there's this weight training facility. And my best friend and I joined and started lifting weights. And we were probably the only 16 year old females at the time even involved in, you know, in that. So I started the weight training there between my freshman year and sophomore year of college, worked at a Bally's Health and Fitness, met a girl that was in corporate wellness and I changed my major to be everything fitness and wellness. Part of the curriculum required you to teach group fitness, and I had never done a class before. My practical was teaching my first group fitness class ever to the Trenton State in New Jersey basketball team. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Scared to death. Wow. Because I wasn't a, like a high-impact girl or any of that. But that was my first like introduction to to group fitness and then in college was able to teach to the um to the professors and to the faculty so did the employee wellness and managed the women's weight room at trenton state and after that when i got into corporate wellness teaching was part of it so nice. it was strength training a little low impact and then when i moved to greensboro i had an amazing mentor and a program called Les Mills Body Pump was coming into our club. And from there, like my group fitness career changed completely because I fell in love with the component of music and movement. And yeah, it was incredible. When I talked to Mutual Connections about you, I, I wanted to ask them some of the words that describe you. And they said, connected, sincere, beautiful, intelligent, strong. What's the reaction to some of the words of the ways people describe you? There's a sense of love, like crazy love. Sometimes in life, you forget things about yourself. To read, to hear those words, pausing to, to really soak that up and say, you know, to myself, oh my gosh, there's different dimensions of it now through lots of experiences, but it makes me really happy. It's humbling, honoring also. There's a lot of love in the words because I also think about that as, oh wow, those are such shared experiences. And I know that I feel that way about so many people too. One thing I'll never forget is watching you give feedback to someone. It was something that I had never seen in any other trainer or any other teacher I've had. When you walked up to give someone feedback, you always accustom yourself to what level they were on. You always turned your hips and your shoulders towards them with your Susan Laney perfect posture. It was almost like you had a smile in your voice and in your eye contact. Does it take conscious energy to deliver that love? Or do you feel like it's a combination of something that's just talent and skill? It's really bringing me back into the many years of training. It's definitely learned. Um, but I also know that there's had to have been something inside of me that to be able to learn how to connect with people that way. And you know, in the early years, oh. you know, some of my first trainings, I mean, a lot of it was just learning content and getting through and understanding, you know, what that was all about. But because of the process, when I started, it was learning how to give very detailed feedback. I think I just was able to get to a space and especially through body balance and body flow, learning more about breath and pausing and seeing people. Yeah. In addition to the advanced trainings where you learn about different personality styles, the whole disc profile, um, different quadrants of the room to be able to just to learn more about people is as I started becoming more comfortable in my content in any of the programs that I was delivering in more of a natural 
get out of think mode and feel mm -hmm. mode and trust like that why I'm here as a trainer is to empower people. It's to inspire people because we're all about the same thing. Once I understood more about how the essence of people and differences and also never assuming that based on the exterior of the individual, dun, dun. whether it be facial expressions, nerves, maybe a frown, a scowl, that's not projected at me. It may be sometimes, but overall, it's, it's what's going on inside of them. What we do makes a difference, even again on their facial expressions. You know, they're there for a reason. So with instructors, it was my job was to lay the foundation of skills to teach a safe, effective group fitness class in an inspiring and connecting way. But the more I, I trained and learned very early on that it's not necessarily training fitness instructors, it's different. It's actually understanding and managing multiple personalities. Um, and that was one of the most, I think, resonating things with me is this is about relationships, seeing people. And I learned through seeing instructors now to see members differently of all different ages, demographics. When you think about skills that are underrated, I think one is finding folks that are able to connect with anybody, mm. no matter where they're coming from in the fitness sense, whether they're brand new to instructing, whether they've been doing this for a long time and may have some of those barriers to learning up that think, I know everything. Um, what she's going to say to me isn't going to isn't going to affect me, but being able to break through that and help offer it in a way that isn't commanding or tells them what to do, but rather gets them to question that barrier to learning or that that struggle they're having and work through that on their own. That's such a mark of a of a strong educator. I hope, listener, you take some of that, whether this is in your job or whether you have children whether you work with other people on a on a project whatever it's it's really managing multiple personalities like susan says and being able to respect those personalities and i love what you said too about sometimes the expression it's not about you it's something that's happening inside and that took a while to 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 get especially when you have you know 16 instructors looking at you and you know back in the day we did three-day trainings you know okay. at, at, you know and even on a sunday of a two-day training you know instructors you know, just looking at you <laughs> you know and some are checking out and you know so it was finding different ways to check back in but then again also to say all right everybody's processing things differently probably a lot of them looking at you too susan just thinking how does she look so good after teaching so many fitness classes today? And how is she not tired? And how is she so intelligent? And how does she not even look at her notes? It's like, uh, you know, oh, you know, flex on a little bit. <laughs> Wisdom, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, but it's always there for sure. <laughs> The most synonymous with the public thought of when they think of Susan Laney, what program is it? Body flow. Now body balance. How did you get to the point where you were training body balance instructors? Where it started was again at um, it started at our at the club that brought body pump on. It's it's grace, it's strength, it's such a different way of moving in your body. And I think that's a little bit of the link of the um of the dance as well, because body flow is this this dance and this and this movement. <laughs> so our team was 
went through training on body flow. I believe I was 23. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Court was probably only not even a year. So that would be my first time leaving, you know, him as a baby. And it, it was a three-day training in oh, Asheville. Wow. Yep. In oh, my God. Asheville, North Carolina. They went and knew no one. There were 23 um, instructors. And that was the most incredible experience, um, going away by myself. I also did not have a, um, I didn't have a DVD player in my hotel room. And I'm very, so I'm very visual, like I'm very visual. And with the kinesthetic aspect of practicing, that was a challenge. I was scared to death to teach meditation also because the Jersey voice. I remember when Kim was done, I, I was like, I, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm like, I want to teach it. And there was an opportunity to apply to be a trainer with Les Mills and to go through boot camp. A good friend and um, former Les Mills trainer, uh, Darren Watson, and I both did the application process and went through um, the first Les Mills um, boot camp in Las Vegas. What's interesting, Judson, is I wanted to be really wanted to be a trainer. I mean, I I was, I I knew, like, I loved it. At the time, I was there for body pump. Mm -hmm. Peg Cleland on like day two, she said, Susan, she said, what would you think about, um, and she said about in her Canadian way, (laughs) about trying to learn a track for body flow and present it here at this boot camp. But I wasn't sure about where I was in skill level with balance. I said no. <laughs> and that's so strange to think about now because you right. Know, and uh, so once I presented body pump, actually I was shadowing body pump. And afterwards, um, Kim Blake, who was my trainer, said to me, "Susan, you should be training body flow." And I started mm. as a presenter and then became a trainer. Wow. And what a what a journey too, right? Because knowing oh, yeah. that you came in fully anticipating the different experience and then here you are now doing both. <laughs> you got the best of both worlds, truly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. This it is these things that that you remember. And and knowing that um we were gonna have a conversation, I was remembering the that, you know, the first time that I was on stage actually, you know, for body flow was in um, it was called the Big House in Poughkeepsie, New York, Gold Gold's Gym, and um, because of the the moon, the moon, the Harvest Moon has been so incredible. The Sun Salutation track was um, something called Good Night Moon, and I remember mm. the morning at like what five o'clock, six o'clock, when the presentation team was there. It was a bright full moon um, in in New York on like a really you know chilly morning, and uh, so the other day I went and played Good Night Moon. It kind of re oh. inspired me with that the way it pulls you back to that visceral part and the feelings you were having in that moment i'm sure was amazing yeah it has been gorgeous i'm it looks movie cinematic almost i'm sure your son is already writing a score for it Um, (laughs) (laughs) i i'm so inspired by that too because it just it's such grit and hard work to get to that point but also it's just passion and just a, a puzzle piece really fit and it's almost like the universe was guiding you in that way, even when you weren't t- choosing that path on your own. Imagine it feels really cool to have that that validation and that relationship to and friendship with Jackie Mills. It was almost a sur- you know a surreal experience. Also being you know being invited to to film a program that I was so so passionate about, and you know at that at that time. Uh, we had the roles of program coaches with um, Les Mills. You know, our, our business structure has, has changed tremendously with that. Um, but what Les Mills as an organization decided to, to do was to invite the program coaches to film because they, our role then was to, to upskill our training team. So I was, you know, as a, the body flow program coach, my job was to train and develop, you know, our future, our future trainers and our presenters. So being able to be immersed in that process in New Zealand um, was, 
you know, was empowering as, you know, as a leader, because then you're able to improve your leadership skills and your mm -hmm. training skills, not just for instructors, but also, also for trainers. Initially, I hadn't worked with Jackie that much. You know, I had been to New Zealand to film um, Body Vibe 10. So I was familiar with Les Mills Auckland and the experience, even though Body Balance is such, you know, an enormous program. It was Jackie and Diana and Corey Baird, as well as a beautiful soul, um, Felipe from Mexico City. To see and experience the knowledge that Jackie brought. Um, and also with one of the best program coaches ever, I mean, program coaches from New Zealand, Kylie Gates was my was my coach. She She's, you know, she's just hardcore, right? So I had a little yeah. like, oh, wow, you know? I mean, I've gotten some feedback from her before, but it was the best experience to be able to work with Jackie and develop that relationship as well. Um, part of our experience was their yoga teacher, theirs as in um, Jackie and Diana, <laughs> um, came and did a, a did a, a feedback session for us. So they okay. she observed us teaching and was able to you know be able to help us as well. Uh, we, and we had fun too. I think that was the other thing because you know you're going into filming and there's nerves. And of course, wanting to do everything, you know, right. But we we did we we had a lot of fun right before filming. Um, but we did push ups backstage, including Jackie. It was Jack. Oh, Jack. I was like, yes. So you know, you got to get that. And then on stage, <laughs> I plus we had one of the coolest um, Tai Chi warm ups. I mean, Dark Horse by Katy Perry. Oh my gosh. Oh. You know, and two Drake songs on there, and you know, it's just <laughs> it's, you know. it could be, have been better for you. The music selection was truly Susan. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, definitely a hot music selection. The lessons and the feedback you've received have gone on to complement all of the people you've worked with, whether it is other trainers, presenters, instructors in multiple countries. Noting you've done trainings in Mexico before, is there? one bit of feedback that really sticks out to you that has really shaped you or still resonates with you to this day? Stop checking the boxes. You know, we were um, at a time with Les Mills too about, again, ensuring all of the safety cues, you know, everything regarding what we did and checking the boxes. So I was, I was a, I was a check boxer, right? Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm a technician as a coach, right? So that whole alignment and physicality, that's typically what I would see first. And I had to learn to, I had to be a better listener also because I would be such a technician. So then I started to need to learn. So feedback was, you know what you're doing, Susan. Own it and let go. And once you can let go, then you're gonna move to that next level as a trainer and a presenter.